Well, it's not about the thing, it's just you. But now she's got me smoking out the window.
Sonic smooth like a map, float like a butterfly on every single track. And the only language that I speak, girl, is fast. So once I get this game to you, I can take it back. Hollering at you from a 1977 Monte Carlo. Hard act to follow. It's showtime, trying to boo you up like it's the Apollo. Your walk is vicious. Let's get down to business. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, will you please take your seats? Please take your seats, and we will be start. We'll start in just a few minutes, less than a few minutes. Okay. Well, honorees, please take their seats.
い。Good evening. My name is Dan Bournet, and for the past 35 years, it's been my privilege to be the public address announcer at Tiger Stadium at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. Welcome to the Manship Theater, downtown Baton Rouge, for the 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We have a full house here tonight. We also welcome on our digital platform. LSU supporters, LSU fans, LSU alumni from around the country and around the world. Tonight, we celebrate the achievements of nine of the most accomplished individuals in the history of LSU athletics. We are here to salute our past, for sure, because our past defines who we are now. The victories that we celebrate today are because of the people who walked, studied, and played before us. And tonight, we honor the best of the best. First, let's recognize the Hall of Famers who are here with us tonight. Please stand when I call your name. Dr. Brad Davis, Walter Davis, Dr. Robert Duga, Ronnie Este. DeAndre Hill, Susan Jackson, Brady James, Bert Jones, Tyler LaFosse, Suzette Lee Aldridge, Mike Maddox, Amy McCloskey McGinley, Delman McNabb, Eric Reed, Kristen Schmidt Duplantis, Bob Smith, Sandra Smith Thompson and Carlos Temple Jr. Thank you. How about a hand? <laughs> These individuals here before you created lasting memories for all Tiger fans and have represented their university with pride and dignity throughout their lives. Let's give a warm LSU salute to these members of the LSU Athletics Hall of Fame. Now let's meet the members of the 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame induction class. One at a time, I will invite each of our inductees to come forward as Director of Athletics Scott Woodward presents your Hall of Fame ring. Dr. Bill Bankhead, administrator and coach. Peter Gay Dowdy, women's track and field. We have the youngest Tiger fan out there cheering. Do you hear it? <laughs> yeah. From football, Laura Hinton. Men's track and field, Bruce Reed. <laughs> Gymnastics, 
Ashley Claire Kearney Thigpen. From Tiger Football, Billy Truax. And who will join us in just a few minutes to receive his plaque and his ring? Men's gymnastics coach, Omando Vega. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> Men's track and field, Lloyd Wills. Softball, Yvette Girard. Tiger fans and ladies and gentlemen, this ring signifies membership among the elite individuals in the history of LSU sports. We hope and we know that you will wear it with pride. Let's have one more round of applause for the newest members of the Athletics Hall of Fame. We'll hear more from each of our inductees in a few moments. But just a reminder that induction into the LSU Athletics Hall of Fame is a significant honor. With tonight's inductees, our membership in the hall grows to 163. That's 163 men and women honored among the thousands of student athletes who have participated in all sports at LSU since we began intercollegiate competition in 1893. This is a special group of Tigers. Allow me to review the criteria for induction into the hall. There are two categories in which an individual can be named to the LSU Athletics Hall of Fame. Former student athletes is one category, and the other category is coaches and administrators. For former student athletes to be eligible to have earned one or more letters in a varsity sport at LSU, must have gained national distinction through superlative performance, and must have established a personal reputation or character and citizenship which reflects favorably upon the university. With the exception of the varsity letter requirement, the same criteria apply to coaches and administrators seeking election to the Hall of Fame. And there is one other condition that sets LSU's Hall of Fame apart from most others. To be elected to the LSU Athletics Hall of Fame person must have earned his or her college degree. That is what makes the people we honor tonight especially exceptional as the best student athletes, coaches, and administrators in the history of Louisiana State University. Before we meet our newest Hall of Fame inductees, let me thank some groups that have made this possible. Thanks to the LSU Athletics Council, Hall of Fame Selection Committee, the National L Club, the LSU Creative Team, and the Athletics Department and staff are supporting the efforts of tonight's induction. We also have a very special guest here tonight, the President of Louisiana State University, William F. Tate IV, and his wife, the First Lady of LSU, Kim Cash Tate. Thank you for honoring us tonight.
Now, let's meet the newest members of the LSU Athletics Hall of Fame. Our first inductee was the first director of the LSU Assembly Center, now known as the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. And he later became a renowned international athletics executive, introducing Dr. Bill Bankhead. Dr. Bill Bankhead grew up in Baton Rouge, and after serving with the U.S. Marines in Korea, he graduated from LSU and in 1960 started the university's men's gymnastics program. He was named the 1967 Southern Intercollegiate Gymnastics Coach of the Year. Bankhead became the first director of the brand new LSU Assembly Center in 1971, and during his 11-year tenure, the Assembly Center was voted annually by the International Association of Auditorium Managers as one of the top 10 facilities in the United States. Bankhead in the 1970s was one of the first administrators to coordinate women's sports and Title IX compliance at LSU, and he was the driving force behind attracting prominent events to the university, including the 1983 Special Olympics World Games, the 1985 U.S. Olympic Committee National Sports Festival, and the 2001 National Olympic Senior Games. 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Dr. Bill Bankhead. Presenting Dr. Bankhead with his plaque this evening is legendary former LSU gymnastics coach, Didi Bro. I would like to thank Dee Dee. All of you know Dee Dee Bro, I'm sure. Uh, she was the one that nominated me for this, and uh, I sure appreciate it. She should be standing here at this podium, and I'm sure she will be next year. So uh, I'd like to also thank uh, Coach Dale Brown and uh, Jay Dorton and uh, Coach Jerry Stovall and a lot of my gymnasts who wrote letters of recommendation for me, and I, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, the committee that selected me, I sure appreciate you allowing me to be up there with all these great athletes. It's quite, quite a treat for me, believe me. Uh, and uh, I think I'd be remiss if uh, I didn't recognize Leanne Westfall, who uh, helped put all this together. Leanne's the uh, director of the National L Club, and uh, she and uh, Sarah Hubble put up with me for a whole lot of uh, time. Uh, trying to uh, get me ready for this, and I really appreciate it. Um, you noted that uh, I have been nominated in two categories. One is coach, and one is the uh, as an administrator. Uh, for me to be recognized as a coach is a great honor to me, because of what coaches do, I think they they help students realize their potential, not only in their sport, but in uh, what they do in life. And it's a great honor for me to be nominated and to be accepted in that category. I certainly realize that I'm not in the category with Yvette or Armando. Uh, those are great coaches. I just feel as a coach. Uh, I wrote this out. I hope I can read it. Uh, the, uh, the category of administrator, it, uh, it's my understanding from looking on the line that there have only been two other people in the history of the Hall of Fame uh, nominated and uh, inaugurated into that category. And uh, those were Jeff Boss, who I knew from LSU, and uh, Carl Maddox, uh, who I uh, worked for for a couple of years. Carl was one of the finest administrators and... Uh, um, best friend that most people had, and those of you that knew him is he was the last of the real Southern gentlemen, and uh, I appreciate it that I've been nominated and accepted into the category with those two, but uh, I, I hope that I can live up to it. Uh, I also realize that any success I've had is due to the uh, great students that I taught at LSU and the uh, 
gymnasts that were on my team back in the early 60s and uh, the great staff I had. When I ran a couple of big events here for uh, the, uh, the city and the uh, university, uh, I had a, about 4,000 uh, volunteers working for me and working, they weren't working for me, but they were doing the work that I should have been doing. They made it happen. And I, I had great help from a lot of people along the way. And uh, I certainly appreciate all of their help. And I do appreciate, I really enjoyed working at LSU. Finally, uh, I'd like to recognize, I, I know that some of my gymnasts from 50 years ago are here. And uh, I don't have time to introduce them, but uh, if you would stand and let me say thank you to you for being on my team. Those that were on my team, my, my gymnastics team back in the early 60s. <laughs> they got their tickets late, so they're in the bachelor's. <laughs> Uh, these guys were not, they were in what was club, called club sports at that time. There was no varsity gymnastics, men or women. And uh, they competed against athletes from other universities, some of the best gymnasts in the United States, and sometime won. So, uh, <laughs> actually, we did win a lot. But thank you, men. I appreciate you being here tonight. It means a lot to me. Finally, I'd like to introduce my family. Uh, I, uh, my uh, sister-in-law, Janet Burge, is here. They can just stay seated, but you know who you are. <laughs> my, uh, my oldest son, uh, John Bankhead, came in. He surprised me. He came in from uh, the Reno Tahoe area, and uh, his son, who is a, a student at Arizona State, uh, flew in last night at uh, about 2 in the morning from uh, Tempe, Arizona, so I'm proud to have him here for, with me tonight. Um, my other son, Dr. Daniel Bankhead, who is uh, here with his wife, Tiffany, and his children, William and Elizabeth and Katie, are here. Uh, the three of them uh, are either current students or graduated students from LSU, so I'm very proud of them. Finally, uh, the love of my life is here. Uh, she stood by me for the past 60 years and consoled me when I failed, congratulated me when I did well, and uh, I'm just pleased to have her with me all the time, but especially here tonight, my wife, Mary Ann. <laughs> Again, I'd like to thank the committee uh, I appreciate everything that you did for me, and uh, it makes an old man feel real good to be standing here among, as I said, these great athletes and the people out here who are in the Hall of Fame. I hope I can live up to the tradition. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. We have at least one Hall of Famer we didn't introduce because I didn't know he was here. So if anybody else is here that I didn't know you were here, get your name up here so we can introduce you. Two-time Consensus All-American, World Football League and National Football League, Warren Capone. Warren. looks pretty fit to me, man. <laughs> Our next inductee was a, get this, 19-time All-American, three-time individual NCAA champion as a track and field sprinter. Introducing Peter Gay Dowdy. <laughs> Peter Gay Dowdy, 2001 LSU graduate was a 19-time All-American and a three-time NCAA individual champion as a sprinter. 
leading the LSU women's track and field program to three NCAA team titles during her career from 1997 through 2000. Dowdy, born in St. Elizabeth Parish, Jamaica, was a 12-time SEC champion, marking the most individual league titles in LSU history. She competed in the 1999 World Championships and in the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia. After her competitive career was completed, she embarked upon a highly successful career as a real estate agent in the Dallas area. 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Peta Gay Dowdy. <laughs> And presenting Theta Gay with our Hall of Fame plaque this evening, national champion, LSU track and field coach, Dennis Shaver, who helped develop Theta Gay into one of the best sprinters in the world. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, so coming up here today, um, I was nervous. I felt like I was about to run the 200 meters at <laughs> the NCAA Outdoor Championships. Um, with that being said, I'd like to thank Coach Shaver for that heartwarming introduction. I also want to express gratitude to the Hall of Fame Committee to Louisiana State University for this prestigious award. With that being said, I just want to say what an honor it is to share the spotlight with my fellow inductees. What great men and women. To be in the company of great Hall of Fame inductees like Lloyd Wills, the first African-American to compete in any sport at LSU, truly a privilege for me. I'm standing here today because of unselfish support from my family and friends and teammates. I would first like to express gratitude to my parents who are here tonight, for my parents for nurturing my talent from the first time that I showed I could run at about eight years old in Jamaica. My dad was very supportive. He lived in Atlanta, Georgia at the time. And I remember one instance where he drove all the way from Atlanta, Georgia for eight hours with a car trunk filled with Jamaican food because he wanted to make sure I got the right nutrition. <laughs> my brother Darwin Dowdy, who's also here tonight, um, my very first car, my dad bought a car and um, it wasn't brand new, but it worked, and my brother also drove the car down from, from Georgia to me on campus. I appreciate that stuff, so thank you. Um, also, um, my very good friends, Mike and Suzette Aldridge, when I first got to campus, I was very shy. I didn't know anyone. Suzette and Mike were my rock, my everything. I was always at their apartment. I think sometimes they wanted me to leave, but they were nice enough not to make me leave. I also want to thank Coach Shaver for taking me from a young, um, just fresh out of Jamaica, not knowing anything really, dropping into Baton Rouge, completely different. Um, atmosphere, um, seeing my talent and um, nurturing me and, you know, putting me in the right position to achieve 19 All-Americans. Thank you, Coach Shaver. I'd like to thank Coach Boo, who's not here tonight, Coach Mark Elliott, and Coach Pat Henry as well. I would like to also express gratitude to my academic counselors, the track and field administrative staff, and all my academic counselors. I would be remiss if I didn't mention my family in Jamaica who helped raise me, my uncles and my aunts, 
Enos Clark and June Clark raised me. They went to my high school track meets, and were, they were there for me throughout the entire process. Last but not least, my family, who drove all the way here from Florida and Georgia to be here tonight. You guys rock. Thank you. So my fiance and my children and my friends, Michelle and Kurt, who also flew down from Georgia to be here, I want to thank you guys so much. Um, I just want to thank everyone who has impacted my life in a positive way. Thank you once again to LSU, and go Tigers! <laughs> thank you, Peter Gay. Thank you, Peter Gay Dowdy. Our next inductee in 1971 became the first African-American football player in LSU history, and he helped pave the way for future black student athletes at LSU. Introducing Laura Hinton. Laura Hinton, a product of Chesapeake, Virginia, became in 1971 the first African-American football player in LSU history. His courageous decision to attend LSU as an 18-year-old has helped pave the way for thousands of black student athletes to play football at the university. Though his LSU football career was hampered by a knee injury, Hinton served as a vital mentor to incoming black student athletes in all LSU sports during a significant time of desegregation of college athletics in the South. Today, Hinton works as a volunteer for several nonprofit organizations in the Baton Rouge community, including as a teacher, program director, and mentor within the workforce development field for adults in underserved areas. 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Laura Hinton. Presenting Laura with his Hall of Fame plaque is his son, Dr. Terrence Hinton, professor at The Ohio State University. That was a great introduction. Great honor to be here tonight. Uh, I have hundreds of people to thank for their love and support. Here's a short list of individuals that I would like to send out a resounding thank you to. First, I'd like to thank God for putting me in this position. He is responsible for everything. This is the 50th anniversary of my arrival in Baton Rouge and my first meeting Faye Marie Laurent. You can guess who that is. My initial goal when going to college was to uh, pick a school where I could prepare for a future, choose a career that I could flourish in, and to choose the right person to raise a family and live the American dream. LSU provided all of that for me. After 44 years of marriage, that produced three children, four grandchildren, <clears throat> many extended family members, Slidell in the house. Th thank you for all your love and support down through the years. To my LSU family, I thank the L Club for supporting all the Letterman and staff members by providing events and functions that helps to keep us united. But my primary reason for accepting this award tonight is accepting it on behalf of all the coaches, teammates, friends, and fans that helped me help make this the greatest experience of my life. 
I have lifelong friends that were made here at LSU, like Tyler LaFosse and Warren Capone. Their actions on my recruiting trip sealed the deal for me in accepting the grant and aid football scholarship to Louisiana State University. With teammates like these guys, who cares about enemies? Guys, it has really been uh, enormously gratifying to play with you on the field, uh, having a lifelong relationship with you. And we set a new standard for LSU football and all sports. I have coaches here tonight. I saw Coach Jerry Stovall, I'm not sure who else showed up afterwards, but uh, all the coaches treated us, me, myself, and the other black athletes, treated us with dignity and respect. I've seen several teammates here tonight. Brad Davis, just one. Uh, together, we showed the state the country and the world, what could be done when people are united and participate non-selfishly as a team on and off the field. This is something that we can all rejoice in and be proud of to have been part of. Going forward, my hope is that people of color especially at LSU, will continue down this path laid down, which is directed at the pursuit of the American dream of peace and prosperity. I would impress upon you to embrace all that LSU and this country has to offer. We need not to look at changing things just for the sake of change, but we should, we should look at trying to make things better for everyone down the road. In other words, let's not be bitter about the past, but let's make sure that the future is better. Some may say 50 years later is far too late. And I say everything has a season and a time. The dream of judgment by character and content of character is being realized. Keep the faith. Go Tigers. Thank you, Laura Hinton. He beat me to the punch. Someone just texted me and told me that a unanimous All-American, runner-up for the Heisman Trophy, member of the College Football Hall of Fame, All-Pro, former LSU football coach Jerry Stovall is here, also a member of the Hall of Fame. Keep those names coming, ladies and gentlemen. Our next inductee set an American record in the pentathlon and was a three-time SEC champion in the event while also helping to lead the LSU men's and track field squad, track and field men's uh, squad, to two national titles. Introducing Bruce Reed. Bruce Reed, a native of Annapolis, Maryland, was the 1988, 1989, and 1990 SEC pentathlon champion, excelling in the five-event discipline comprised of the 60-meter hurdles, the high jump, the shot put, 
the long jump, and the 800-meter run. He also set an American record in the pentathlon in 1990. He established LSU records in both the pentathlon and the 10-event decathlon. Reed, who competed in the decathlon at the 1988 and 1992 U.S. Olympic trials, helped lead the LSU men's team to back-to-back NCAA outdoor championships in 1989 and 1990. He earned bachelor's and master's degrees from LSU in psychology and social work, and he now works as the director of mental health at the Washington, D.C. Department of Corrections. 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Bruce Reed. To all in the family, ladies and gentlemen, here to present Bruce with his plaque is his brother, Eric, who was elected to the LSU Athletics Hall of Fame in 2005. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Uh, first, I want to give thanks to uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, without him, none of this would be possible. I uh, also want to thank my family. Uh, one thing that I know is very important uh, in um, development of any athletics is the support of a strong family uh, member. Uh, I want to thank my dad, Orly Reed, my mom, Sheila Reed, uh, who, are, uh, who are the backbone of everything that I've uh, ever done in sports. But my, um, growing up, uh, my mom and dad, they kept us real busy. We were uh, involved with swimming, ice hockey, and karate, baseball, football, basketball. <laughs> we, they kept us busy all the time, and I really appreciate that. At that time, I didn't understand it, but now I understand why they did what they did. I uh, want to thank the L Club also and the, F and the inductee um, committee for the, this great honor that uh, they bestowed upon me today. I also want to thank the rest of my family that's here. I want to thank uh, first my, um, my wife, um, Pamela Reed, who I met at LSU. Uh, we lost her uh, three, and, three and a half years ago uh, to kidney, to um, liver cancer. I uh, just want to give honor and, and thanks to her. And I, out of that relationship, um, my two sons, Bruce Reed Jr. and Brent Reed, uh, who's uh, married with Raelle and has a, my, my great-granddaughter, Braylon, who are also here as well. I uh, want to thank my oldest brother, Marcus Reed. I uh, want to thank my, my youngest brother, Orly Reed, as well. And, of course, you just met my, my brother, Eric. <coughs> Eric... Um, the reason I came to LSU was because Eric was already here. I uh, had offers all over the country uh, to compete uh, for, for, their, for their colleges, but um, Eric and I grew up, and we were close our whole lives, so I came here following him. And the interesting thing is uh, Eric was recruited as the decathlete. He became the hurdler. I was recruited as a hurdler. <laughs> I became the decathlete. So they got what they wanted at just at different, at different times. I just want to thank everyone for all their wonderful support. Uh, for, and I'm, I'm glad to hear everybody mention their families because I know family is a key point in development of any athletics, any educational system uh, that we have. I also want to thank um, my nephews who are here, Justin Reed, uh, Eric Reed, Eric Reed Jr., uh, my uh, brother Brandon, my brother Jack, um, Liz, my, my dad's wife Liz, uh, Eric's wife Sharon, um, and if I forgot anybody, I'm sorry, <laughs> my, my nephew um, Ryan and Justin Reed as well. I just want to thank everybody for the support, and again, I want to thank LSU. Uh, without LSU, my life wouldn't be where it is today, and I really thank LSU for uh, for offering me the scholarship and also giving me the support that I needed to, to, to be where I needed to be and where I am today. Thank you again to the L Club and to uh, the LSU Inductee Committee. Committee. Thank you. Congratulations. 
Our next inductee set a standard of excellence for LSU gymnastics by winning multiple NCAA titles. She was a five-time All-American, and she was voted 2008 SEC Gymnast of the Year. Introducing Ashley Claire Kearney Thigpen. Ashley Claire Kearney Thigpen, a product of Manchester, Connecticut, was a five-time first-team gymnastics All-American and the 2009 NCAA National Champion in the Vault and the Floor Exercise. She won a school record 114 individual titles at LSU and was voted the school's Female Athlete of the Year in 2009. She was voted 2008 SEC Gymnast of the Year, and she was named a finalist for the 2009 NCAA Woman of the Year Award. Claire Kearney Thigpen has earned bachelor's and master's degrees from LSU and a law degree from Southern University. She currently works as LSU's Associate Athletics Director for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and she served as the Tiger Gymnastics Team's volunteer coach for 11 seasons. 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Ashley Claire Kearney Thigpen. And back again to present her with her plaque, the coach, Dee Dee Bro. Ashley? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I want to first dedicate my words to three important people in my life who are no longer with us. My grandmother, Alvinia Clare, who was my angel on earth, my great aunt, Lucille Clark, who was my comic relief. And the reason why I say that is because she only drank orange juice. She swore it was just orange juice. And I learned the hard way that it actually was majority Jamaican rum with a splash of orange juice. So she was my comic relief. And my grandfather, Clarence Kearney, affectionately known as Sonny, uh, my son's middle name. And he was our truth serum. It's an honor to be standing here tonight with eight of LSU's most elite former athletes and coaches as a part of the 2021 Hall of Fame class. I'm humbled to have been chosen for this distinction by the committee and that my achievements were notable enough to allow me to join other individuals who embody the same competitive spirit and passion that I do. I always knew I wanted to be a collegiate gym gymnast and prepared myself physically and mentally to accomplish that goal. But attending LSU was simply not ever a part of my plan. My family and I came to Louisiana one summer before my junior year of high school to attend um, an AU basketball tournament for my little sister. And the tournament happened to fall around the same time where I was becoming heavily recruited. It was picking up, and so I sent 21 recruiting videos at that time to colleges across the country, and LSU was simply not one of them. Instead of going to the aquarium one day, though, with the basketball team, my mom suggested that we take a trip to LSU to visit the campus. When we arrived, we found Dee Dee, Bob, and Philip, the coaches at the time. And with no notice, they dropped what they were doing, gave us a tour, and a little over a year letter, later, I signed a letter of intent to become an LSU Tiger. It was then that I learned that some of our greatest opportunities are not a result of what's written on paper or what's in our minds, but rather a spontaneous result of where preparation meets expectation. LSU took a chance on me in 2004. I lived, I learned, I grew. I became an attorney and fought for those who couldn't necessarily fight for themselves. Now today, I work with and under people who believe in me and what I can bring to LSU in a different capacity. LSU invested in me then, believed in the services they provided, and they're doing it again now. I'm in a position within the athletics department that allows me to inspire and impact the future of the department through diversity, equity, and inclusion, which feeds my soul because I'm doing the work that gives me purpose beyond myself for the university that I love. Some may be of the opinion that my most defining achievements, which, which placed me here today, include NCAA and SEC titles or All-America honors. But life has taught me that the people who were placed around me and the values they instilled in me as I journeyed through life have been the foundation of it all. It's those people who have defined my success by molding my thought process and shaping my character. The athletic achievements are simply byproducts of the lessons I've learned along the way from some remarkable people that have invested in me. As I reflect on my time at LSU, there are so many moments that were filled with laughter and triumph and others filled with heartbreak and tears. 
like being ranked number one in the nation and not making Super 6 as a freshman, but then coming back as a junior and making Super 6 for the first time in school history. A feat that only 15 of us can say we did for ourselves and for Didi, who was passionate and fiery and fought to build the program from nothing into a powerhouse. Or how I spent four years creating rituals and superstitions. I had to wear the same pajamas on Wednesday and Thursday night before every meet. I had to wear the same socks the day of the meet. I had to take a 30 minute nap and wake up 15 minutes before departure. When the team met in the lobby, I then had to buy a Sprite and take five sips of the Sprite. Each, each sip represented each event that I competed in and then one sip for the all around. When we got on the bus, I had to sit in the last seat and listen to my iPod in the same order so in my mind, these superstitions are what would ensure a successful competition and nothing else. I even had Didi in on it. We were at the SEC championship one year and the hotel didn't have Sprite. I don't know, whatever, they didn't have Sprite. But Didi was determined to find one because she knew who she was dealing with. So she found one and it was the daughter of one of our support staff members. She was on her first gymnastics trip with us and she happened to have an unopened Sprite. So her Sprite quickly became my Sprite Sounds like an NIL deal brewing here, huh? <laughs> um, but don't worry, Dee Dee promised her a, a replacement and delivered. And that is how we got here tonight, superstitions and rituals. In all seriousness, though, um, those experiences and others were necessary in helping shape the person standing before you today. But looking back, what was most impactful was having coaches who poured themselves into me. Coaches who believed when we were doubtful, pushed when we were tired, and inspired in a way that never allowed us to question their heart. Whether the approach to coaching was considered traditional or unconventional, embraced or challenged, there is value in having coaches who care about you holistically, beyond what you can provide for them on the competition floor. Bob and Dee, Dee thank you for introducing me to Louisiana, for giving me 100% of you every day. Thank you for helping to develop me as a person. I valued the wisdom provided and embraced the hard days more than you realize. Thank you to Jay, Ashley, and Katie as well for continuing to include me in the LSU gymnastics journey. I was raised by what I consider to be the perfect duo, one of which is a Hall of Famer himself, and the other has a mural painted of her on a wall in our hometown, which leaves me kind of unsure as to whether they're impressed by this at all tonight. But my mom sets the tone of letting it be known that wherever we are, we belong. She creates waves, and she's taught me to do the same. She's powerful and driven and passionate and demands respect. She's unapologetic in who she is and leads with her truth. My spirit of perseverance comes from you, Mom. My dad, like my grandfather, is a man of few words, but his presence gives me the comfort I need to keep moving forward despite adversity. He is humble, calm, and poised, things I've taken from him without always realizing it. He reminds me that it's all small stuff, and no matter what, I will win. He is my calming relief no matter the circumstance. My parents have different approaches, but shared and instilled the same message in me daily. So thank you both for sacrificing without hesitation teaching with love, and motivating me with passion while remaining true to who you are individually. I have to next thanks my thank my best friend, my co-pilot, my confidant, my husband, Dewan. He keeps me safe and grounded and, always, and allows me to always be my authentic self. He is my sanity on my most challenging days, and although he never got to see me compete, he is my biggest fan in everything that I do. I can't get off the stage without thanking my sisters, so much of who I am and my competitive nature comes from our conversations and experiences growing up. My family, who knows the influence that they have and still have on me, and the role that they play in my decision making to this day. My in-laws and son, stepson, who, is, who have embraced me and treated me like a daughter, sister, and bonus mom since the moment I met Dewan. My friends who are here tonight from Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Houston, Memphis, and New Jersey. They have served as my support systems through my mile, many milestones and I'm thankful to each of them for playing a unique and impactful role in my life. I'm also grateful to have my 88-year-old grandmother here with us tonight as well. She is my last living grandparent, and I'm thankful that I have her to continue passing down her wealth of knowledge and noteworthy stories. Finally, we can clap for her. Finally, to my baby boy, Beckham. Gosh, that little boy gives me so much life and purpose. I hope he will one day be able to look back on my career, but more importantly, my life and how I lived it and be so proud of his mom. When I think about DJ and Beckham, I think about how they are the future. They are LSU's tomorrow. 
I pray that I'm half as successful as my parents were at surrounding them with the right people so they are empowered to use their voice, pushed to exceed their own expectations, and inspired to impact others like I was. Thank you, Louisiana, for embracing me every day, and as always, forever LSU. Ashley, thank you, wonderful. Thank you, Ashley. Our next inductee was an All-American tight end who later helped to revolutionize that position in the National Football League, playing with the Los Angeles Rams and the Dallas Cowboys. Introducing Billy Truax. Billy Truax, who played at Holy Cross High School in New Orleans, was a 1963 first-team All-American at tight end for LSU. He was a three-year starter for Tiger teams that won 26 games and played in three bowl games, including an Orange Bowl win over Colorado and a Cotton Bowl win over Texas. Truax helped lead the 1961 LSU squad to the SEC championship as the Tigers posted a 10-1 overall mark and a number four final national ranking. He played 10 seasons in the NFL for the Los Angeles Rams and Dallas Cowboys, and he was integral in the establishment of the tight end as a pass-catching threat in the league, helping to revolutionize the position. He played 114 games in the NFL, and he earned a Super Bowl ring in his hometown of New Orleans when the Cowboys defeated the Miami Dolphins in January 1972. 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Billy Truax. Here to present Billy with his plaque this evening are Ken Berthelot, his daughter Kimberly, and his son Rick. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attendance and your support of the LSU Hall of Fame. Uh, one of the guys that I talked to about this evening says there's three kinds of speeches you can give. The kind you write, the kind you give, and the kind you wish you have given. And apparently, I'm the only one that got the four-minute memo. I need a, <laughs> need a deal, so... <laughs> uh, I... Uh, I want to thank God for another wonderful blessing in my life. It's, uh, I've received many, many honors, but this is the ultimate. Uh, it still gives me a tear to think about it, and uh, this, it, it's amazing, and uh, I'm eternally grateful and humbled and proud to be a member of the Louisiana State University Hall of Fame. I want to recognize my fellow inductees. Uh, I don't know a lot about them, but I've read their bios, and they're certainly well-deserving, and it's an honor to be with you. Plus, it's tough to follow a lady on a speech. I want you to know that. Uh, of course, I want to thank Scott Woodward, Burge Osberry, Rudy Macklin, and Leanne Westfall, um, the Hall of Fame people that sustain this and maintain it and take care of the logistics and the details. These things just don't happen. It, 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 there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and also, uh, they say this is about you, Billy. En enjoy the evening. Uh, to me, it's more about those that helped me get here. Uh, and I, uh, I'm pretty sensitive about that, and I'm going to just... Uh, Take, now I'm down to three minutes, so I think uh, I think uh, I think uh, I want to thank my kids, Kimberly, Rick, and Chris. Chris is the offensive line coach for McNeese, and uh, they're in Houston tonight, so he couldn't be here. But uh, I got uh, my, my grandson, little Billy, who just started flag football, and uh, Catherine and Grace, Ashlyn and Abby. Ashlyn and Abby are students at Oklahoma University. And then uh, Lexi and Tatum. And I want to thank their mothers, Heather 
to Michelle, <clears throat> my stepdaughter, who's here from, came, just arrived from uh, Asheville, North Carolina, and her son, Gus, who's a six foot eight basketball project at the Asheville School in Asheville, North Carolina. I got to kind of tell Coach Wade about him. So he's going to, you know, of course, uh, my nephew, Kevin, and his wife, Nancy. My sisters and brother, Barbara, Kathleen, Mary, who's deceased, but an LSU graduate, Sylvia, Jesse, my brother. Barbara, I want to thank you for being a, the anchor of our family after Mom and Dad passed away and holding our business together, keeping our family together. They'll be happy knowing that the Truax name will be forever in the LSU books and records. Louisiana families that, that, that helped me during my four years here. In a lot of little small towns, guys came from all over. We had a, a really great recruiting class in a lot of small towns, but I want to name the, uh, the Sibleys in Waterproof. Nobody knows where that is. We're up in Tensaw Parish. We're up above Verity. And uh, the Slacks in Spring Hill, the Lemoines in Cottonport, the Besselmans in St. Rose, the Jules Carville family in Laplace, I think Jack Carville's here tonight. He's the first guy that put me on LSU when I was a, we were in boarding school together in, in high school. The Joan Carville family here in Baton Rouge. And the Ross Bottoms in Shreveport. And of course the Brechtels in New Orleans. I practically lived with them during my lifetime in boarding school and Berenger and I are like brothers today still. I want to thank the business people. Tim Berthelot, Bernard Fernandez, they were pushing my case. I hear they got a good word from Dee Dee Bro. So thank you, Dee Dee. Uh, and Jack Andoni couldn't be here tonight. Former member of the Board of Supervisors. Barry Wilson, one of my former Holy Cross guys. Governor Edwards, Billy Rhymes, and Dan Robin. And again, Scott Burge and uh, Rudy and Leanne. And I've got some guests here from the Gulf Coast. Phil and Betty Shaw. Phil's my uh, architect. He's been very helpful to me in my commercial real estate business. And then I got two buddies, Rob Watson and Jake Carr. They're uh, walking, talking LSU encyclopedias. They can tell you any score, any game, and all the stats. So uh, when they say that we're still a powerhouse, we're just waiting for our next leader. I've got a special, special guest. Bear with me, I would like to, for him to stay in. The former governor and U.S. Senator from the state of Virginia, George Allen and his daughter, Brooke. Uh, George was a son of the famous LSU co uh, NFL coach at the Rams that gave me my start. And uh, stand up, George. <laughs> Thank you for coming all the way from Virginia. And we got Cynthia. Angel Hamilton Graves, the wife and daughter of my dear friend, John Graves, who passed away in January. <clears throat> John and I were my closest friends at LSU and in Baton Rouge. He was a brilliant engineer, a contributor to the community, a solid citizen, a contributor to the LSU. And he's in the, the LSU School of Engineering Hall of Fame. I went to that induction, and he told me, Billy, some night you're going to be in the LSU Sports Hall of Fame. So, Johnny, tonight I made it, buddy. Thank you very much. Here. <laughs> I want to thank all of my teammates, coaches, trainers, doctors, managers, equipment men, and all the friends who have supported me. Jimmy Johnson said on his speech, anybody that's ever helped me, thank you very much. <laughs> and to Nancy Von Grossman, my mate and partner, 40 years, and I love you, and thank you for toleration and endurance and uh, <laughs> yeah, 
the good and some of the bad things that we had to do. Uh, I wasn't going to tell any stories, but given tonight's situation, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you one final deal there. In 1961, probably nobody was, only Bill Bankhead was probably here. And, uh, uh, we had a really good football team. I won't give you all the dates and scores like Drake and Rock can, but uh, we were invited to the Orange Bowl to play Colorado. You got to bear in mind that back in 1961, the Deep South was still, still deeply segregated. And uh, it was a very sensitive issue about us going to play Colorado. We had a, a, a couple of black guys team and the coaches got together and uh, Jerry Stovall was on that team uh, and we got our athletic director Jim Corbett's notification and we, we told him go see Jimmy Davis the country western singer that became governor of Louisiana and, we, we, and the le legislators and uh, the board of supervisors to tell him that we're not buying into this race deal. We want to play the, that football game. We want to play Colorado, and we want to go to Miami, and we want to play in the Orange Bowl. And we're not going to the Sugar Bowl. We were supposed to go back and play Ole Miss again in the Sugar Bowl. We went and Coach Beeple said, you told Mr. Corbett, he said, if you want him to go there, you're going to have to coach him. So anyway, we didn't. Uh, we went down, and we had a wonderful trip, and it was uh, just a wonderful experience. And I'm, I'm proud of that moment then, and I'm, I'm, I'm equally proud of it tonight, given the situation and, and where we are. And uh, just, uh, that, was, that was before the Civil Rights Act of 1964. We broke the color barrier, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I want to uh, thank God again. I want to thank you, LSU. God bless America. God bless LSU. Thank you. This is my stat machine. That 1961 team shut out one, two, three, four, five opponents, shut them out, and gave up a total of 64 points the entire season. <laughs> Governor Allen, your daddy, George Allen, went on to coach the Washington Redskins. He gave up every draft choice he had to stock his team with veterans. And a reporter said, Coach, what about the future? And he said, the future is now. That team did go to the Super Bowl. It fell short, but it was a fond memory for someone like myself who was living in Washington at the time. Our next inductee was a two-time NCAA National Coach of the Year. And he is a member of the United States Gymnastics Hall of Fame. Introducing Armando Vega. Armando Vega enjoyed a tremendous career as LSU's men's gymnastics coach from 1972 through 1984, producing teams that finished in the NCAA top 10 on nine different occasions. The NCAA gymnastics coach of the year in 1977 and 1978, he produced 58 All-Americans during his LSU tenure. Vega led the Tigers to 12 straight league championships and he was named League Coach of the Year in 1973 and 1976. A native of Hurley, New Mexico, he was inducted into the United States Gymnastics Hall of Fame in 1977. Vega was a member of the 1956 and 1964 U.S. Olympic gymnastics teams that competed in Melbourne and Mexico City, and he served as head coach of Mexico's Olympic squad. 
2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee Armando Vega. Armando may be with us just a little bit later this evening, but his plaque is being presented to him and will be presented to him along with his ring with one of the great gymnasts that he coached at LSU, Cesar Garcia. Cesar, a few words about Armando. Coach isn't feeling very well tonight, a little dizzy. So um, if he makes it back, I mean, that would be fantastic. But let me just say that this man took a bunch of kids, ragtag from all over the United States, um, and made us feel like we were somebody. He could take a VW and make the VW believe he was a Cadillac. And so um, during his tenure, um, um, second in the nation twice, uh, produced gymnasts that became incredible in everything that they did. Um, uh, I'm still trying to be one of those, but uh, the other guys did really well. Um, Armando was a great Olympian, um, friends all over the world, uh, NCAA champion, uh, great father to two daughters, and I hope he'll be back to tell you a bit more about all the great things that he accomplished in his time at LSU. Thank you on behalf of Armando. Caesar? Thank you, Cesar Garcia. Our next inductee is the first African American to compete in any sport at Louisiana State University. He was a four time All American and five time SEC champion as a sprinter for the track and field squad. Introducing Lloyd Wills. Lloyd Wills joined the LSU track and field team in 1969, becoming the first African-American to compete in any sport for the Tigers. He joined basketball player Collis Temple Jr. in 1974 as the first black student athletes to earn an LSU degree. Wills, a product of New Orleans, was a four-time All-American at LSU in the 440-yard dash and in the mile relay. He was a five-time SEC champion and he earned first-team All-SEC accolades on 10 occasions. During his LSU career, Wills worked as a big brother to physically handicapped youth. He later enjoyed a brilliant career as a teacher, earning 2002 Teacher of the Year recognition from the Orleans Parish School Board. 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Lloyd Wills. Presenting Lloyd with his plaque this evening is LSU Board of Supervisors member Collis Temple, Jr., who joined Lloyd in 1974 as the first African-American student athletes to earn degrees at LSU. Congratulations to you both. Good evening, Dr. William F. Tate IV, friends, family, and distinguished guests. This is an honor beyond my dreams. 52 years ago, I arrived at LSU. Sometimes it seems like yesterday, sometimes it seems like 100 years ago. I had the pleasure of being in Broussard Hall with some of the best athletes in the world. Have you ever heard of a guy called Pete Maravich, Bert Jones? Larry Shipp, Tommy Casanova, Bob Smith, or Collis Temple. I saw these guys every day, and if I had known they were going to be famous, I would have taken pictures or gotten their autographs. <laughs> but if you've never heard of them, I invite you to Google them. First, I must thank my parents, Audrey and Lloyd Wills Sr., 
who are no longer with us. Literally, I would not be here without them. They were great parents. They kept six children grounded and balanced and into adulthood. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Thank you to my George Washington Carver High School teammates and coaches, especially, especially Coach Enos Hicks and Coach Warren Braden, who trained me to be a winner on the track and in life. Thanks, Irvin Mobile Carter, one of, the, one of my high school dual assistant coaches. Mobile was the first person to tell me in my sophomore year, with certainty in his voice, that I was going to be a state champion in high school. Although I didn't have a clue what that entailed, the very next year, I was the 440-yard dash state champion. Thanks, Mobile. Thanks to my sisters and brothers for just being you. And an extra thank you to my younger brother, Harold, who joined me at LSU as a long jumper. Thank you to my kids and grandkids. See, I told you I used to be fast. Thank you, Coach May, Coach Walker, Coach Garland. Being the first black athlete at LSU came with his own unique opportunities and challenges. And it was not lost on me that Coach May was the first LSU head coach to coach a black athlete. So he also inherited his share of opportunities and challenges. Considering the decade we had to work in, I think he did a terrific job. Thanks, Coach May. Thank you to all my LSU track and field teammates. I can't remember having an unkind word with any of you. It's amazing that many of us are still in contact with each other, sometimes on a weekly basis. You made me a better runner, and I hope I played a small part in your success. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Keith Ballard. I call Keith my honorary son. He is the person that made me believe that I was worthy and deserving of the honor, of this honor. He dug into my history and found stats and newspapers and magazine articles of accomplishments that I had completely forgotten about. Keith organized all the information and submitted it to the LSU Athletic Hall of Fame. And well, here I am. Thanks again, Keith. Thank you, Al Coffey. I met Al in high school. He was a senior and I was a junior. Al told me he was going to LSU and wanted me to come the following year. I felt I had a friend at LSU before I got there, and that was a big factor in my decision to attend LSU. Thanks, Al. Thank you, Carlos Temple. I couldn't ask for a better friend. Carlos always found a way to put fun in our days at LSU and always encouraged us to pay attention to our academics. It was important to him 51 years ago, and I'm sure it's just as important to him today. Thank you, Carlos. In closing, congratulations to all my fellow inductees. Thank you, LSU, for the tremendous honor, and go Tigers. Thank you so much, Lloyd. Our final inductee is one of the winningest coaches in the history of NCAA softball, a four-time SEC Coach of the Year. She was the driving force behind the construction of LSU's Tiger Park, regarded now as the finest softball facility in the nation. Introducing Yvette Girard. Yvette Girard elevated the LSU softball program to national prominence during her 11 seasons in Baton Rouge. She directed the Tigers to College World Series appearances in 2001 and 2004, and she led LSU to three SEC regular season titles and four league tournament championships. A four-time SEC Coach of the Year, Girard spearheaded the construction of LSU's Tiger Park, which was completed in 2009 and is regarded today as one of the nation's best softball facilities. A Broussard, Louisiana native, Gerard completed her career as the fourth winningest coach in NCAA softball history with a total of 1,000 
285 wins at UL Lafayette and LSU. 2021 LSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Yvette Girard. Presenting, presenting Yvette with her Hall of Fame plaque this evening is her successor at LSU, Tiger softball coach Beth Torino. Billy, I got the memo, but I'm going to stick to the four minutes, I think. Uh, first of all, thanks to the Hall of Fame committee. I really don't know who nominated me, but whoever did, you're in the will. <laughs> I want to congratulate the other uh, Hall of Fame honorees tonight. What a group that I'm in. And I would also start with, I obviously have to thank God for the career that he gave me. I come from a very small town. It's not so small anymore, but from a very small town, town pre-Title IX baby that was not allowed to play anything. And I never quite understood why God gave me athletic talent and then didn't let me play. Little did I know that he'd give me a career that I never even dreamed of. I obviously have to thank my parents who are no longer with us now. If you see me later, I'm wearing them on my lapel tonight. Um, they were so influential in my career. My family who's seated there and here, um, shout out to Broussard. Um, they were the best sister-in-law, nieces that were the biggest cheerleaders for my career. They, um, they certainly wore red for 20 years and they gladly changed to purple when I crossed that river. To the administration who hired me, um, it was the third time that LSU approached me about the softball job, and I thought, you know, I don't think they're coming again. I, I think I better say yes this time. To my coaches who coached with me, to the parents of the, the recruits and the players who just became family, to my players who there are many here tonight, so I want them to stand. Come on, guys, stand up. I thought about having one of them present me with a plaque, but you know how players are. They would say, oh, she was your favorite. Right, right. <laughs> Who became part of my staff later. I want to thank Kristen Hobbs came for driving from Texas A&M. I can't really say gig em, uh, Hobbs. Uh, to Kristen Schmidt, who drove, uh, who's in the Hall of Fame now, who drove from Houston also. And I'm sorry if I missed someone else. I probably shouldn't have gotten off on that tangent. Um, we have a, um, I have two great nieces here tonight. And one uh, is recently married, and her last name is Grimion now. And she's a high school softball coach. And now she is the new Coach G. And I'm trying to get... The youngest one, I've got her coming to Beth's camp, so maybe that'll be a, a lineage there, uh, continuing the softball world. You know, when Verge called me, I, 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 I was floored. I, I couldn't even imagine that this honor would be bestowed on me. Um, it wasn't an easy decision after the third time around. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm alumnus of the school. I was born and raised in Broussard. I started the program there, but... I'm a Louisiana girl, and who doesn't know about the pride, the tradition of LSU? You know, when uh, Jodine hired me or when they approached me, I, you know, we, we talked football. I knew all about every coach that's been here and, you know, the players and everything else. So I'd been approached by other schools to take their jobs, but this was the only one I would have ever left home for. Big baby couldn't leave 50 miles down the road, but... Um, you know, this is how um, disoriented I was when I got here. I went to my secretary and said, what parish do I live in now? Huh. And she said, Yvette, the river, west, east. I was like, okay. Um, but uh, again, just truly humbled. It's an unbelievable honor. I never dreamed that this would be. 
anywhere in the picture, um, I, and I'd, I'd be remiss if I wouldn't um, leave this stage without thanking Beth Karina, because she has gone above and beyond to make sure that I'm still included in the program. She always makes me feel welcome. Um, and gosh, in the program in great shape with her. <laughs> Again, to the committee, uh, to Leanne, I, I think I bothered her about 20 different times about tickets and, and, the, um, and other things, but um, forever LSU and go Tigers. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Yvette. Thank you, Yvette. Well, we thanked some folks at the beginning, and uh, you always run the risk of leaving people out, but there are three people I really do need to, uh, to point out and, and recognize tonight. One is the, uh, the head of the L Club, and uh, the other is her capable intern, who will be heading to graduate school next year. And they are the ladies behind the curtain, so let's bring them out. Leanne Westfall and Sarah Hubble. Come on out. Thank you, ladies. The other person is the voice that you heard on all of the presentations and the guy who coordinated all of the media releases honoring our honoree from the LSU Athletics Department, uh, Bill Frank has, and he's here tonight. Bill, stand up, wherever you are. <laughs> Bill is also tuning up with some fall ball, getting ready to announce uh, the next season of LSU Tiger baseball at the box. You know, there's really no greater honor than to have a former student athlete, coach, or administrator elected into this esteemed Hall of Fame. Those who were elected here tonight and those who came before them represent the very best that LSU has to offer. They have been great contributors to their university. We have been honored as a group here and those in our digital platforms around the country and around the world to recognize these accomplishments. And this time next year, they will be in the audience and they will be welcoming our new class of inductees. Let's give them one more round of applause. Now, those of you who are on YouTube or on some other digital platform, you're on your own for the rest of the night. But as for us, we're going to start tailgating in about two minutes right outside the theater where there is food, uh, refreshments, some adult beverages, of course, and photo ops for you and for the family and friends of our inductees. Thank you. Good night, forever LSU.